Well, here we are, the first video on differential equations, and it's just an introduction. Because right now, you're, you're sitting there trying to wonder if you can learn differential equations. You're either in a class or you're doing it on your own. That's fine. But it's kind of the first question is, what are we actually doing? So I want to take some time and explain what in the world differential equations is all about, what the goals are, what you should be looking for, what they're based on. Um, after that, the next video, I'm just going to show you how to check to see whether an equation is actually a solution of a differential, differential equation. So what a differential equation tries to do. Number one, we're trying to model some real life situation, a real life change. That's the goal here. So that means there's a lot of word problems. Yeah, because we're, we're trying to actually do stuff now. The problem is, is that there's a balance. You see, in real life, and you know this because you've experienced something that you've tried to do mathematic and like, wow, there's, there's lots of different stuff going on. And that's the same problem that we run into in differential equations is that the, the more variables you add, the harder it is to do the math. So there's definitely a balance between a, a mathematical model that perfectly represents your situation and the ability to actually do that mathematical model. Um, so sometimes we, we omit, even though it doesn't seem right, we omit some of the situation so that we can actually do the math. And the models work pretty good. Are they perfect? Not always, no. But that's why we're always refining our techniques. We're always learning more math so that we can further represent this model. We're just scratching the surface. And that's what differential equation starts with, is scratching the surface on how to represent real life change with math. That's number one, that's what we're trying to do. Number two is what a differential equation actually is. So what these things do is they relate a derivative in an equation. So that's a differential equation. If you have an equation with derivatives in them, you're dealing with differential equations. If you've taken calc one and calc two and calc three even, you have dealt with differential equations. They were very basic, but anytime you do an integral, you can assume that you're dealing with a differential equation. That's one of the techniques to solve them, as a matter of fact. We do lots of integrals. Well, if derivatives represent things that are changing, then that's, that's what we're, we're trying to deal with in our differential equations. So derivatives represent change, and since the goal is represent real-life change, we're going to be dealing with derivatives anytime we're dealing with a changing thing. So like velocity or acceleration or population change as respect to time, these things are always changing and we can represent them fairly well with the different differential equations. I hope you're getting this so far. Um, we're not necessarily focused on numbers anymore as solutions. That's not our number one thing to start with because the solution to a differential equation is actually an equation itself. Imagine this, you have a, an equation with a derivative of something. Well, the derivative is a derivative of some function. We're looking for that function. And then we can use that function to do other things. But the primary goal is find the function for this derivative that you have in your equation. That, that's the idea that we're trying to do. So in a differential equation, just to recap this stuff, we're dealing with real life change. Change means we have derivatives. A derivative comes from some function. Find the function. That's a solution to a differential equation. But when we find those solutions, they're usually this infinite family of equations. Remember when you do an integral and your teacher probably yelled at you every time you forgot the little, I know I would, yell at you every time you forgot the little plus C. Like, what's the big deal with the plus C? That plus C represents a family, an infinite family of equations that when you take a derivative of it, it gives you that solution, or it gives you the equation that you started with. Well, that's the same thing we have going on here. If you have an equation with derivatives in them, and you find the solution, so this, this equation that you, you that if you take a derivative of it, it's going to give you this thing that you have in your differential equation. Well, if you put a plus C on that, you have this infinite family of equations. And so we basically deal with the same arbitrary constant idea that you did in Calc 2 and 3, and even Calc 1 for a little bit, the entire class. Uh, you do an integral, plus C. You do, you find the, the solution to a differential equation, you're going to have an arbitrary constant. In fact, 
uh, I'm going to skip down here. In fact, the order, which is just the highest derivative that you have in your differential equation, so a first derivative, order one. Second derivative's in there, you got to order two. Third derivative, you got to order three. It, as your order goes up, the number of arbitrary constants also goes up. So if you have a second order differential equation, so a second derivative in there, you're going to have two arbitrary constants. If you have just a first derivative, you're going to have one arbitrary constant. So call it C. If you have two of them, call it A and B. That's, that's what's going to happen here. As your order goes up, as the highest derivative increases, so if you have a, a first derivative or second derivative, third derivative, your arbitrary constants are going to increase too. Think, think about y for a second, okay? Just, just think through this. If you need to, this is the simplest case, if you need to undo a first derivative with an integral, you're going to get a plus c. Let's say you had a second derivative. Okay, undo that second derivative by an integral. That makes it a first derivative, but you have a plus c. Now do it again. Well, that plus c is going to get a variable tacked on it with your next integral and then another plus c. You're going to get two arbitrary constants. That's what happens here. So that's what we mean by order and that's what I mean here by as the order increases, arbitrary constants go up too. Um, so we, we talked a little bit about how solutions are an infinite family of equations. That's the plus c idea. If you're given an initial condition, so like, hey, y of, sub, y of 0 equals 5 or something, then we can start using that in our equation, the solution, this family of equations, and it will give you a specific constant. That's the way we narrow down our solutions from this general solution, which is a family with like plus c sort of stuff, into a very specific or particular solution. It just requires an initial condition. The, so let's, let's recap a little bit. Our goals, model real life change. Change means derivative, the derivative's in the equation, differential equation. That's it, that's the whole idea here. Well, we're not necessarily focused on finding numbers as solutions because what we know about derivatives is they're from functions. We're trying to find the equation. So the equations become our solutions, functions become our solutions. Every time you find one, it's gonna have a plus c in it. It's gonna be a family of curves that work in this differential equation. As the order goes up, number of, so like second derivative, third derivative, fourth derivative, the number of constants also goes up. That should make sense. We talked about the integral thing. You get a plus c, do it again, you get a c, let's call it x, and then another different plus c, more arbitrary constants. If you have an initial condition, then you can narrow down your general solution to get a particular solution. It says, well, all these curves are solutions, but if they have to go through this one point, there's only one curve that does that. And that's how we narrow down the general solution into the particular, so the family into one particular solution. That's what we're looking for. Last thing I want to talk to you about right now is the ordinary differential equations versus partial order differential equations. Ordinary doesn't mean commonplace. Uh, what it means is that all of the differential equations and ordinary differential equations are based on the fact that we will have one independent variable, usually x. It's not the case where we have two independent variables, like the calc 3, partial derivative sort of thing, where you count them as two independent variables. That would be partial order differential equations. That's, that's later, all right? So right now, we're focused on having equations in these equations that have derivatives, differential equations, where the primary functions are all based on one independent variable, usually x, sometimes it's t for time. Uh, that's what we're doing. So all this stuff hopefully makes sense as where we're going. Now I know I haven't explained everything about it. Well, we're going to start very simply. In the next video, what we're going to talk about is how to check, just check, whether an equation is a solution to a differential equation or it's not. So this hopefully makes sense where we're, where we're coming from, real life situations, derivatives are changing things, so we're going to have them in that equation. And then we have a family because the integral idea of plus c, as your order goes up, more plus c's if you will, and we can restrict that family to one particular solution if you have an initial condition. All right, check out the next video because right now we're going to start plugging in equations to see if they're actually solutions. See you next time.